guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you are looking for a kind, friendly vermiculture community, you are in the right place. Today we're looking in on the red wigglers in my tower system, which is a worm factory. But you can use this information for any shape of worm tower, round or square. So today's plan is we are going today's plan is we are going to we're going to check on the experimental layers of the uh, avocado pits and also the unshredded bedding. It is still warm here and it's about 80.4 degrees Fahrenheit in the basement. It is down to 59% humidity so maybe I will get enough castings to dry out before I need to plant my garlic. If you guys have any tips for me on how to better do garlic planting, put that in the comments below. I'm gonna, this is going to be our harvest tray, so I'm going to take out all of the, the large chunks, and we did feed quite a bit in the way of seeds with the cucumbers, both this last feeding and the one before. So we're probably, it's not unusual that we will see them sprouting in here very easily. So this is the layer that's getting harvest. So I'm doing a little bit of the aggravation method. I'm going to get all the worms and make sure that they are going to want to leave this part by mixing them all up. Got some pretty good castings here, nice and fluffy. And as soon as we get those worms to leave, then we will absolutely be able to harvest this tray. Now this tray is about five or six months old. And this is what you get in five or six months, at least in the summer, spring and summer, in zone 5-6, in my basement. Okay, let's look at the next layer down. This is the layer we actually fed last time. Okay, now this layer had a lot of cucumbers in this. And... As we all know, cucumbers don't last long in a worm bin. It looks like this is just the skin. Now, I had let it get way too ripe, but basically, you know, fell off the side of the, the grow bag, and I ended up with a big, huge one. So I'm not seeing any actual parts of the cucumber. It was, I'll put the picture of it last time. But you know what? I'm willing to bet that this layer here is not going to finish up in a month. So I think this layer is quite a bit behind what I was expecting. You can still see all of that bedding. Nowhere near done. Let's look at the next layer down. Now this layer has never been fed any people food or any worm chow. Look at how much we have in the way of castings in here. That's pretty amazing. Good job, worms. Good worms. So this still smells very much like cardboard. It hasn't even, you know, managed to get to the, the part where it smells kind of like a forest floor. We do have quite a few worms down here. So they are working away even though they don't have any people food or worm chow. Let's look at the next layer down. All right, now this is the layer that has our avocado experiment in it. And we were saying that we thought it was gonna take them about six months to completely consume these. Now they have gotten to the part where they have become squishy. At least that one has, this one's still hard. See, I think there's four of them in here, let's see. You know, and it all depends on, you know, how old the avocado was when when I bought it. This one's also squishy. And of course the worms aren't the ones making it squishy like that. It's the bacteria and any of the worm critters that are in the bin here. But you can see this bin. This bin has not been fed anything and it's still making castings. All right, bottom layer, let's have a look. So this is our experiment bedding layer to see what they will do with just shredded, or, you know, hand shredded paper, not the uh, normal kind that's done in a shredder. And there's still quite a few worms in here. And they are definitely making castings. So good job, worms. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more bedding to this because the equal amount for when I shred it and when it's hand-torn is not the same 
and I want to make sure that this layer actually gets the same volume in the end. So I'm going to add a little bit more. Okay, it's going to get some of that packing. I don't know what's in it. It looks like just layers of paper. And then they're also going to get some egg carton. Way back in the day, I think there was a, a worm farm in Ireland that used to take this from the grocery stores. Made great bedding. So, as I told you, I on the community post, we are going to be revealing what breeds Shadow is. So let me do that as we're reconstructing the worm bed. Okay, so here is the layer that we are going to feed today. So it is not ready to move up to the pre-harvest designation. It has got too much bedding in there, so we're going to go ahead and feed that. Now, looking at Shadow's DNA, only one person out of everybody guessed his main breed, which is Catahoula Leopard Dog. Quite honestly, I hadn't even heard of it before I got his DNA test. It is apparently a breed from Louisiana. It's an American-made breed that I guess when the Spanish came to North America, they bred what dogs they had in with what the local breed was in Louisiana, and thus we have the Catahoula Leopard Dog. Second is a uh, Neapolitan Mastiff. I gave people credit for if they just said Mastiff, because <clears throat> there's quite a few different Mastiff kinds, so I thought Mastiff, but Neapolitan Mastiff is a very distinct one with all the wrinkles, and it's actually shorter. Next up is Cane Corso. Quite a few people did guess that. Next down is the American Pitbull Terrier. And then the next one down, and only one person guessed this, German Shepherd. German Shepherd Dog. That was not expected at all. There is not one thing about him that seems like a German Shepherd. And then, believe it or not, all of the Mastiff, Pitbull, <coughs> Cane Corso, all of that came from one side of his family. And then the German Shepherd and the Catahoula Leopard Dog as well as a bunch of 5% of different kinds of um, herding dogs was on the other side of the family. And the only thing that he got from both sides was the Cane Corso. So there's a good, uh, many of the people that said that they thought he was uh, Cane or Kanye Corso. Kanye? It's, it's Italian. So however you say dog in Italian, that's what it is. Only if, you know, most of the people were definitely sure about the Mastiff and the, the pit bull, but you know, the number one breed, I gotta hand it to uh, Carrie Schmoyer. She's the only one who got that. And then Animal Geek was the only one that actually thought there was any German Shepherd dog in there. So I'm giving one extra t-shirt because um, it is a major portion of the dog's breed. And nobody guessed it but the one person. So I do have a community post with everybody's logins. I have um, tagged everybody. My email address for this worm channel is at that post. So if you are those people, please send me an email with which t-shirt you would like, what size you need, and the address to send it to. All right, well, if you like this particular system, I have a whole playlist right over there. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like this one right over here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.